there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a blueprint cork board. I know what you're thinking and some of you are thinking we just did a cork board not too long ago and that is true, we did. And on that show, I made a small cork board and the reason for that is that I was trying to save some wall space um, and remove my large cork board to give me a little more room to place things on, on the wall. Being a small shop, you have to utilize every bit of space that you can. However, by doing that, um, a lot of the things that I make, or at least some of the things that I make, I use blueprints. And the problem is, now that I've gone with that smaller board, I had nowhere to put my blueprints. So I thought, why not make a board that is space saving and that is conducive to using blueprints. So what we need to do for starters is mill some stock. And for this, I'm going to be using oak, just like we did with our other cork board. The difference is it's gonna be three quarters of an inch thick. Now that we have our stock milled, we need to cut it to its width. And for this, our frame around our blueprint cork board is going to be one inch wide and three quarters of an inch thick. So what we need to do now is rip some one inch wide stock. Well, most of my blueprints that I work with are 24 inches long. So I'm going to make a cork board that is 32 inches long and that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room. So just as we did before when we made our other little cork board, we've got our foam core here and we're just gonna cut off a couple of rough pieces. This isn't exact measurements. It's just something for us to glue some cork to. So I'm going to spray these with a good generous helping of spray adhesive and then we're going to apply some cork to it. Now I've got some scrap off-cut pieces that were left over from our other cork board and that is what we're going to be using for this. We've let this glue tack up for three minutes just to get it nice and tacky and we're going to line up our cork on the one edge and just rub it down. So do that for both pieces and that will be the basis for our cork board. Well, our next step is to very carefully trim our cork at the ends. And you want to be as meticulous as you can with getting a square edge here because we're going to have mating pieces that are going to uh, butt end each other in our frame and we don't want any gaps. So we're just going to be as careful as we can and use a square edge to get a perfect square here. Once you get it all trimmed up, you just want to check to make sure that your centers mate the way that you'd like them to, that you have a nice clean joint I'm pretty happy with the way that looks right there. So what I'm going to do now is take my tape measure and because this was scrap and cut so unevenly, I'm going to measure what would be my most narrow point here to see what the widest cork board is that I can get. And it looks like it's going to be two and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the back the two and a half inch mark and very carefully with a steel edge and an exacto knife I'm going to cut this down to two and a half inches wide. So 
So now we need to cut the backer board and the backer board in this case is going to be some 1 8 inch thick hardboard. So we know the dimensions. We already said it was going to be 2 or 32 inches long. So we have two 16 inch long pieces of cork as well. We know that it's two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to rip this to two and a half and then cross cut it to 32 inches. Now that we have our backer board and our foam core and our cork, we can take a measurement so we know how deep the dado has to be in our frame. And it looks like we can get away with, looks like it's going to be 13 30 seconds deep. And that's perfect. That's no big deal. That we can measure on the table saw. So 13 30 seconds deep and we want it to be a quarter of an inch wide and that will cover up any of the edge imperfections where we didn't quite cut our foam core perfectly. So there you go. There's your measurements for the rabbit that we're going to put in the frame. So it's just a matter of setting up the ripping blade, making a couple passes and we'll get that rabbit done. So what I would try now is a test fit of the cork board and the backer board in the rabbit of the frame and see if you're happy with the fit. If you're happy with the fit, then there's nothing more to do than to cut up a frame using 45s and using your backer board for reference of size of how big to make the frame. <laughs> So I've just clamped this together temporarily and I'm testing the fit with the backer board and everything seems to fit just fine. So if I'm happy with it, and I am, then I can glue these together. You just got to make sure that you get all the squeeze out from the inside and outside of the frame. I'm just using a little bit of freezer paper on the bench in order to keep the squeeze out from going on my bench. Uh, I, I know it's a workbench, but if you can keep the stuff off of it and keep from making a mess on it, why wouldn't you? So a little bit of freezer paper goes a long way to keep the mess off of it. Well, this has been left overnight, so now we'll just unclamp it and give the whole assembly a good sanding. Now that the sanding is done, I just want to take off that sharp edge here. I'm going to use a trim router and a 1 8 roundover bit. Well, one of the final steps here is our method of mounting. And with this being a longer cork board and kind of awkward, we don't want to be balancing it. I guess I could put some hangers here on either side if I wanted to, but what I really want is a good secure mounting. And for that, I'm going to drill and countersink a mounting hole through each of these shorter end pieces so that we can actually get a screw through each one countersunk and drilled and screwed right into the wall of my shop. And before 
before we mount it, we'll just carefully place our cork board pieces into our frame. Now you may be wondering what is going to hold this cork board in here, as at this point I haven't allowed for any sort of hold down, like a, a picture turn or anything like that on the back. And that's because I'm not going to apply one. The reason for that being I have made this so that the pieces are flush with the back of our oak frame. And due to the fact that we're mounting it to the wall by screwing it in place, the wall itself will end up holding our cork with no problems whatsoever. Well, now it's time to mount the board. We're just going to use some number eight by uh, inch and a quarter screws. And we're just going to line it up up here. Now, we'll just get the one side in to help us hold it. And then we're going to level it out and make sure everything looks nice and square to our other one. So, just like that. And then we're going to get a level on this. And once we're happy with the level, right there, we're going to get a second screw in. Just like that. And now whenever I'm working on a set of blueprints, it's just a matter of sticking them up here so that they're visible to me, but out of the way. Now I could have left it at that, but I thought it was a great opportunity to use the scroll saw and add a little customizing above. And you can see here that a little bit of quick scrolling and that sort of thing, and you end up with this kind of a product. And this just adds an extra little element to it of customizing from your shop. So if you want to do this sort of thing, I'm just showing you that the uh, options are there to really uh, kind of spice up this blueprint corkboard. And there you have it. A blueprint corkboard. Guys, this whole idea developed out of the fact that I had to basically reduce the size of my previous one, hence the show on making that smaller cork board. And then I found out or realized, geez, I got nowhere to hang my prints. And my wife came up with the idea, why not make a blueprint cork board, which seems to work really well as I still get to use that wall space for some storage as well as I can use it for my blueprints. Now, it's up to you guys if you find this useful or not, but you don't have to have it on that area. Like, you don't have to have your cork boards together the way that I do you could have one of these above your bench and then whenever you're working on blueprints or even little shop notes, it's a quick little space saver cork board where you can just pin up a couple little notes instead of having them lying around on your workbench. It doesn't necessarily have to be for blueprints. It's just a space saver cork board to help you organize the things in your shop. So, Guys, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed this show and I hope that you're gonna give this idea a try for yourself. And honestly, I hope you're gonna join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.